Okay, welcome back. We're about to begin our second to last unit. Chapters 14 and 15 is what it covers, and that's on acids and bases. Now, we're going to discuss some definitions at the beginning of this uh, unit. The page numbers in your notes are wrong, so we're going to need to change that. Let's change that to pages 478 to 482 of your notes. And it goes into some detail as to what these uh, definitions are. Now, we're going to go ahead and define them here in this video quickly, but for, uh, for some greater depth and background, I'd encourage you to read those pages from your textbook. Now, the first definition we're going to discuss is probably the most common, most easily understood, and therefore most often used in a first-year high school chemistry class, and that's the Arrhenius definition of an acid or a base. Quite simply stated that it is uh, an acid is something that when I place it in water, it produces protons. Now, protons are also written as H pluses, sometimes they're written as H3O pluses. So if they can produce a proton in water or uh, H3O positives in water, we call them acids. Bases are substances that produce hydroxides in water solution. So if you place something in water and it dissociates to produce hydroxides, we consider it to be basic. Of course, there's something interesting of note here. If we take a proton, H plus, and a hydroxide, OH minus, and put them together, don't we end up with water, which is neutral? So, we call these oftentimes the reaction between acids and bases. We'll call them neutralization reactions. The Bronsted definition of an acid is a substance that donates a proton. And I'll give you an example of that a bit later in our notes. And a Bronsted, uh, the Bronsted definition of an acid, or base, excuse me, is something that can accept a proton. Notice once again that these are opposites of each other. Something that donates or gives up a proton when uh, involved in a chemical reaction is a Bronsted acid. And the thing that gains that proton during the reaction is a Bronsted base. The last definition we don't um, discuss too much in this class, it's the Lewis definition. I'll just read it to you quickly. A substance that accepts a pair of electrons during a chemical reaction is considered to be a Lewis acid, and a substance that donates or gives up a pair of electrons during a chemical reaction is a Lewis base. Don't worry too much about this definition for right now. Let me give you a quick example of a Bronsted base. Ammonia, NH3. I guess I can draw its Lewis structure off to the side here for you. You guys are good at Lewis structures now. It has that non-bonding pair of electrons there. Turns out that that is really good at attracting protons. So protons can be attracted there, and ammonia can gain a proton. Hmm. What do we call something that can gain a proton or accept a proton? Well, we call that a Bronsted base. So ammonia can accept a proton. Let's take a look at the water molecule. Remember I said a moment ago water is neutral, but in some chemical reactions it can act as an acid and it can actually act as a base. Let me give you an example of where it's acting as an, uh, as an acid just for a second. Water H2O, if a proton is removed from water, that means something else is gaining that proton, we end up forming a hydroxide. So if it loses or donates that proton to something else, water is acting as an acid. And that fits our Bronsted definition of an acid. Now in class, I'm going to do a little demo for you for this, but for right now we'll just list some properties of acids and bases. Um, I don't encourage you to do this too much well with any of the acids we have in the, in the stock room, but there are some common household substances that you actually consume quite a bit of that are acids. It turns out that acids have a sour taste to them. So, I don't know, we could consider vinegar, we could consider, consider lemons or oranges or grapefruits. Um, those Sour Patch Kids candies that some of you guys have had before, they're coated with citric acid. And of course, they're sour, thus the name Sour Patch. So acids have a sour taste. Number two, acids can react with many metals. And we usually call them the active metals, but I'm just going to say many metals for right now to form hydrogen gas. So if we react metals, oh, sorry, I missed something here. No, I didn't. 
react if acids are reacting with metals uh, oftentimes we produce hydrogen gas in the process and that's a property of, uh, uh, of many acids. And number three uh, this is what we'll see in class. Acids turn blue litmus paper red. So that's called an indicator. So blue litmus turns red um, in the presence of an acid. So we can tell quickly if something's acidic or basic by doing something called a litmus test. If blue litmus paper turns red, we know we have an acid on our hands. Bases. Uh, once again, I don't encourage you to go through the stock room and taste our bases. Uh, turns out that bases have a bitter taste. Now, one base that you may have tasted is soap. If you've ever gotten some soap in your mouth and, mouth and tasted that, soap is bitter. Uh, Windex window cleaner uh, has a very bitter taste to it. If you've ever sprayed that, maybe while you're washing the windows or uh, cleaning the windows, and maybe some of that, that mist somehow got back into your face and you ended up tasting it by accident as a very bitter taste. So bases uh, taste bitter. Uh, number two, uh, bases have a slippery feel to them. They feel slippery. And number three, um, bases will turn red litmus paper blue. So the opposite of what acids did. So once again we can conduct a litmus test on a solution to find out if it's basic. If it turns red litmus paper blue, we know we have a base on our hands. And I'll demonstrate those two to you in class. Alright, now we're going to review a little bit of nomen nomenclature, how we name and write formulas for acids. First of all, let's recall what binary acids are. Binary acids will contain two elements. Um, they will contain hydrogen bonded to a non-metal ion. And we'll give you some examples. For instance, HCl, HBr, HI, H2S. You'll also notice that binary acids don't contain oxygen. Okay, so binary acids contain two elements. We're going to start with H and end up with a non-metal. And oftentimes they'll have this symbolism AQ after them, which of course tells us that they are dissolved in water. Now to name them, as you recall from much earlier in the year, we learned how to name acids, that they all begin, binary acids, all begin with the prefix hydro. And they all end with the suffix, suffix ic, and then we say acid. So let me give you an example. We'll go ahead and do HCl really quick. HCl, we'll put an AQ here, it's dissolved in water. We'll start with hydro. And then the suffix we'll be referring to the nonmetal. And we will do chloric. And then we would say acid. So HCl is hydrochloric acid. Let's do H2S quickly. So H2S dissolved in water. Once again, we'll start with hydro. And then we're going to refer to the element sulfur for the, end, uh, for the suffix ic. And we'll say hydro sulfuric, and then we'll say acid. So um, naming binary acids is pretty straightforward. Once you recognize you have a binary acid, start with the prefix hydro, then the nonmetal you'll end with ic, and then close it up with saying acid. Okay? Ternary acids. No prefix. Please remember that. Prefix, the prefix hydro is used only for binary. Now, ternary acids will have three elements. We will have H, X, and O. So that means that they will have oxygen. So they do contain oxygen. And for that reason, 
they are sometimes referred to as oxy acids. So they are the acids that contain oxygen. Now let me give you a couple of examples here. HNO3, HNO2, H3PO4, H2SO4, um, HClO4, and there are many others we could come up with, but you notice that they have three elements. We have hydrogen, a non-metal, and then of course oxygen, and that's where the name oxy acid comes from. Now, to name these guys, we look at the polyatomic ion that the hydrogen is stuck to. So in this case, hydrogen is stuck to the nitrate ion. NO3 negative is called nitrate. And if it ends with eight, as this does, they end up becoming ic acids. In the case of HNO2, we see that hydrogen is bonded to the nitrite ion. NO2 negative is called nitrite. And so these become us acids, O-U-S. So let me quickly do HNO3 for you. Um, the radical becomes ic, so instead of nitrate, we would say nitric acid. And HNO2 we could do as well. NO2 is nitrite, so ites become uses. So this is called nitrous acid. So we have nitric, HNO3, and HNO2 is nitrous. H3PO4, the PO4 is called the phosphate ion. And then we change the ending of the massage a little bit so it sounds a bit better. We don't call it phosphic acid, we actually call it phosphoric. H2SO4, SO4 is called the sulfate. That's another one we just we massage a little bit, so instead of calling it sulfic, we call it sulfuric. We can also have H2SO3. Now SO3 is called sulfite, so the name of this oxy acid would be sulfurous acid. Okay, so I give you on your homework assignment a chance to practice those and review your notes from much earlier in the year. Now I'll wrap up today talking about the strength of acids. Um, when an acid is placed in water, the following reaction occurs. So we're just going to take a simple binary acid here, HX. When I place it in water, the water can gain a proton to become H3O+. So you'll notice here that the water is acting as a base because it's accepting a proton from the acid. This of course is losing a proton and turning into X negative, so it's called an acid. Now you'll notice that the arrow in this case is going in one direction. That means it's not reaching equilibrium. If the arrow goes in one direction, we say the reaction goes to completion, and the acid is called a strong acid. So acids that do this 100% of the time or very close to 100% of the time are called strong. Now think about this, that implies that there are some acids that don't lose their proton very easily. The arrow doesn't go just one way. We'll see an arrow going back the other way. And of course, those would be called weak acids. So strong acids will lose their proton to water about 100% of the time. And weak acids, eh, they're not going to lose it all the time. In fact, some of them are very, very weak and they rarely lose their proton to water. But nevertheless, if they do on occasion, they are still considered to be acids and they would be considered weak acids. Let me give you a list of acids that do this 100% of the time. The first acid, HClO4, is called perchloric acid. When I add this to water, the water will take away that proton 100% of the time and become H3O pluses. What do I have left? Well, my HClO4 lost a proton, so I have perchlorate ions, ClO4 negatives, without the proton any longer. Since this reaction goes 100% to completion, this acid named, once again that's called perchloric acid, it is a strong acid. Now we usually simplify this a little bit. We usually cancel water out of both sides of this reaction just to make it look a little prettier and easier for chemists to write. So we usually would write HClO4 
reacts to form H pluses and ClO4 negatives when dissolved in water. Let me do a few more examples for you. HI is another strong acid. This is called hydroiodic acid. When I place this in water, the water will take that proton away all the time and become H3O plus and leave me with I negatives. If I get rid of the water from both sides, I end up with HI forming H plus and I negatives. Notice the arrow going in one direction, telling us that it's a strong acid. HBr is another strong acid, that's called hydrobromic acid. If we cancel the water out of both sides, we end up with HBr forming H pluses and Br negatives. Hydrochloric acid is another strong acid. We end up forming H3O pluses and Cl negatives, or we could write it as HCl forms H pluses and Cl negatives when dissolved in water. Sulfuric acid is another strong acid. Water can gain a proton and leave me, instead of with two H's, one bonded to the sulfate ion. And so we end up with H2SO4 forms H pluses and HSO4 negatives. Sulfuric acid is the only strong acid that has two protons. You'll notice all of the others just have one proton. And the last strong acid is nitric acid, HNO3. Water will gain that proton and form H3O pluses and the nitrates. We could also write HNO3.